Hello everyone, my name is Grep-V. Welcome to another episode of Grep's Garden, a series about growing plants in rust. In this episode, we'll review an efficient and modular design for a garden base. Before building, the first step is to pick a suitable location. For this design, at least part of the base will need to be built in a body of water. Obviously, the ideal spot will be in a temperate biome with access to fresh water. While rivers are a source of fresh water, only build on a river if the area is level. Make sure that your water source is deep enough to allow pumps to be placed, but not so deep that you can't place all of the foundations. You can use a barbecue as a crude depth gauge. If only its lid is above the surface, then the water is deep enough. Next, decide which layout to use, and then build the entire footprint in twig to ensure that you won't run into trouble later. The core section is always the same, but the size and shape of the garden section will vary a bit, depending on your needs and preferences. There are a few different layout options for the garden section. 2x6, 3x4, and 2x3. The garden section can also be rotated by 90 degrees to accommodate different terrain. Before committing to the build, you should decide how many floors you will eventually use. We'll cover all of these things in more detail throughout this episode. Okay, let's start building the base. Check the water depth and place two square foundations where your pumps will go. These foundations should be roughly parallel to the shore. Using the twig preview as a guide, the joint between the vertical post and the small angled support should be just below the surface of the water. Next, place a triangle foundation on the end of the 2x1 and surround the rest of the 2x1 with square foundations. Place the remaining foundations in the garden section. We'll use a 2x6 layout for this example. Build the TC room and upgrade it to stone. Place the TC and add a door. A garage door is preferable, but a double door will suffice. Upgrade the rest of the foundations around the 2x1 to stone. Do not upgrade the foundations where the pumps will go. Create an airlock in the triangle. Surround the perimeter with walls and add one interior wall for the jump up column. Upgrade the walls to stone and upgrade the foundations in the garden section to stone as you do this. Leaving a hole for the jump up column, cover the first floor with ceiling tiles and upgrade them to stone. Place the first jump up tile. If you have a garage door, place it at the bottom entrance of the jump up column. Build the walls for the next level of the jump up column and upgrade them to stone. You may find it easiest to look down at an angle while facing an existing wall in order to place another wall on top of it. Place the next jump up tile. Build and upgrade the door frame. If you don't want to finish the jump up column now, cap off the top with a ceiling tile and upgrade it to either wood or stone, then place a door into the door frame. That ceiling tile will need to be destroyed later. If you want to finish the jump up column now, use scaffolding and repeat the previous sequence until you reach the desired height. Cap the top with a ceiling tile and upgrade it. Make sure to build one level past your desired height to allow for roof access. As you descend, remove the scaffolding and place a door on each level from inside and below. Next, it's time for some electrical work. Place a battery and root combiner in the TC room and wire the output of the root combiner to the input of the battery. The root combiner isn't strictly necessary, but it's strongly advised. It can save you from having to climb back up the windmill tower later. Scaffold your way up the jump up column and construct the windmill tower. Make sure to bring a windmill, wire tool, and enough building materials with you. The total height of the tower, including the jump up column, should be nine stories. In this example, the jump up column is four stories high, allowing for three garden floors plus roof access. So the tower portion needs to be five stories. I recommend upgrading the windmill platform to metal to discourage potential griefing. 
connect the output from the windmill to one of the inputs on the root combiner. Climb back up to the top of the tower and remove the scaffolding as you descend. Place some electrical branches in the TC room. If the water source is salty, place a powered water purifier on the first jump up platform and wire it up. Destroy the twig foundation closest to the airlock and deploy water pumps as shown. Configure and connect additional electrical branches as needed, and wire up the pumps. Plumb the water outputs from the pumps into a fluid combiner, and connect the output of that fluid combiner to the input of the purifier if applicable. Make sure that the fluid combiner is placed higher than whatever it outputs to. The routing of the hose doesn't matter, just the relative heights of the connected components. If the foundations are too high, you can get stuck inside the water area. If this happens, you can remove the pumps and place a foundation below you while jumping, or you could place a tuna can lamp on the side of the foundations to help boost you up. If the foundations are too high and both sets of pumps have been deployed, there might be a gap where you can fall in and get stuck. If it's not possible to jump up onto the pumps to get out, then use the tuna can lamp trick. Okay, we're ready to place some planter boxes. Make a grid of twig low walls in the garden section and place large planter boxes between them. When finished, destroy the temporary twig low walls. Where sprinklers will be placed, upgrade those low walls to wood. Place the sprinklers and connect them to your water supply. Finally, add some ceiling lights. If a light is placed exactly on the intersection of four squares, it will provide light to the plants in all of them, even if it doesn't look like it during nighttime. If you can't tell exactly where the intersection is, make your best guess, check the position, and move the light as needed. Confirm that the planter boxes are receiving water as expected. If heaters are required, use window frames instead of low walls in the places where sprinklers attach. Place each heater as high as it can go at the center of each window frame. Note that the window frames block the ideal positions for light placement, so you'll need to put a light at each end of the window frame instead of at the center of each 2x2. Using extra lights is a more efficient option than using extra heaters, so it's worth the trade-off to configure them this way. If you're building in the desert biome, you will need to turn off your heaters during the day in order to prevent a slowdown in plant growth. That's outside the scope of this video, but it can be accomplished by using solar panels and a blocker. It can be useful to have a master electrical shutoff switch, especially if your garden consumes more power than the windmill can generate consistently. Wire the shutoff switch between the battery and the first electrical branch. The TC room has enough space for some other items, such as a workbench level 1 or 2, a large box, and a sleeping bag.
If configured correctly, the storage room next to the TC room can hold the equivalent of eight large boxes, and the bottom of the jump up column can hold the equivalent of four large boxes. This can be accomplished by placing barbecues and small boxes in an L shape. Leave a comment if you want me to cover this in more detail in a future video. When you add a second story, there will be plenty of space for mixing tables and other items. As you build one or more modules above, you may need to move or reroute some plumbing components in order for water to flow properly. Remember that you were limited to six sprinklers in one chain, so you may need additional pumps and purifiers. For an in-depth look at how sprinklers work, refer to the sprinklers episode in this series. Here's the wiring diagram for the most complicated setup. A three-story base with a salt water source and heaters that turn on only at night. Total power usage in this configuration is 93, so another couple of lights could be added for convenience, but that's about it. I've included a link to the diagram in the video description. I hope that this video was useful to you. Until next time, happy gardening!